Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you might be. Uh, I hope you're well, and I hope uh, that um, you've had a good week since uh, since we last met and spoke. Uh, sorry, we're a little bit late. We were just sort of, you know, chit-chatting in the background, as we do, just um, getting ready. Um, but, you know, I, I'm sure nobody is, is too upset that we're a few minutes late. Um, we've got a really good show for you today. Um, we've got a great uh, interview coming up. Uh, a little bit later on with uh, the wonderful, delightful, um, gorgeous Alex Ball. Um, so if you are here for that, stick around. It's coming soon. Um, and of course, we've got our regular smattering of uh, music technology news and uh, discussion points and so on and so forth. So uh, business as usual. Um, first of all, thank you all for coming in. Thanks to everyone that I can see saying hi in the chat. Welcome along if you're a first time viewer. Do let us know and we'll um, we'll give you a shout out. Um, but before we do any of that stuff, I guess we just get all of this stuff out of the way first of all. So um, if you can, if you haven't already, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Um, if you want to comment during the show, then of course there's the, uh, the YouTube chatty thing um, that you can do or Twitch if you're watching us on there, Facebook as well or um, the platform formerly known as Twitter. You can leave your comments and we will see those through there. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. It's it's really important to us that uh, people subscribe because it tells algorithms what to do and, and popularizes our content around. And of course, you can share the stuff yourself, which would be fantastic. Um, so do all of that. That'd be great. Um, if you want to support the channel, you can do that in a number of ways. Again, through the YouTube chat, you can use super stickers um and super chat uh contributions uh if you're watching on catch up thank you first of all for coming back and watching us but there's also a thanks button down there somewhere with a big heart and if you click on that same sort of thing um but of course the other way to contribute to the channel and we've got some more news about this coming up a little later on is to support us on our new patreon uh page so if you go to patreon.com forward slash pro synth network uh, you can subscribe to us for as little as two US dollars a month or more if you wish to do that. It's entirely up to you. We don't uh, don't demand anything. We just set a little two pound limit up there, and um, our subscribers will get exclusive content as and when we we get it. And guess what? We've got some. So we'll tell you about that in a little while. Uh, so Patreon is our kind of. It's, going to become our sort of main source of income i think oh and youtube memberships you can do those as well if you want to we just wanted to set up a variety of options to suit all people um however they like to uh, help support us and to each and every one of you that has subscribed on patreon or bought a membership or has made a donation at any point during our four year almost four years existence we thank you very very much you are amazing and us still being here is all your fault simple as that but thank you ever so much uh, for that and as before you can find us across all of the social media platforms that you can see there obviously youtube twitch instagram facebook uh what else threads um x we're all Grindr. across all of those sorry grinder grinder yeah what's the other one um i, I don't know I, I, I never use these things Mums network yeah that's oh yeah yeah definitely um quick fit Quick fit. <laughs> yeah. Let go. That's a good one. That's a yeah, good one. That is a good um, one. <laughs> so we're, we're all over that, um, as as you'd expect us to be. So uh, come and give us a follow there. But Facebook is the main place if you're watching and you're not a member of our Facebook group. That's kind of our main congregation point. I am sort of churning ideas around websites. Um, we, I don't know if that's the thing to do these days or whether it's just all social media. I don't know. We'll do a poll maybe and ask your opinions. Um, if you have a question during the show, um, stick a capital Q in front of your comment. That way we can sort of pick it out and put it in the appropriate zone so that we can go and pick it out later on. I will say right now that our interview with Alex Ball is recorded. And so if you have a question for Alex, by all means ask it, but he won't be answering because he's not here. It's kind of, we, we did it in the past um, because well, we'll explain when Alex, Alex uh, Alex's portion of the show comes up. But he, he will be here and you will get a lot of Alex. 
So um, it's not just a five or ten minute snippet. This is a good chunky thing that we did. So, um, yeah, stick around for that one. I think you will like it. Um, and I think that clears up all of the boring housekeeping stuff before I introduce our fellow uh, co-hosts for the evening. I want to say thank you to Mr. Andrew Brooks, who is also a moderator. You can tell that because he's got a tool. Look at that tool, a splendid spanner, which means that he is a moderator. He will kick your backside if you put a foot at a place in the chat, which doesn't happen. So thank you. Uh, but thank you, Andrew, for your subscription. Uh, thank you for your membership, which is also uh, denoted there by that, um, that little S symbol there. He's super. That's what he is. Um, thank you ever so much indeed for that. And uh, thank you to Andy for your £5 more Super Booth Beer Fund. I am going to get absolutely leathered at this rate so thank you very much indeed and to our, our good friend dr mike metley five us dollars it would be cheaper to join the patreon but he's just too stupid to do that um so that's fine not a problem you say give us your money any way you want you don't have to it's you're not obliged but thank you uh to those three gentlemen Yay. for um donating it is much appreciated also um I have to give a shout out to other moderators because we have Andrew Brooks, but we also have um, Ben, uh, who also runs the fabulous Musings website. If you haven't bookmarked that page, what the hell are you doing? It's amazing. It's a fantastic page. Um, so go and check Ben's page out. But Ben also does a good job of housekeeping. And also Andy Synth Addict, although I don't see him in the chat at the moment. He might be busy or he might still be asleep. Uh, so we'll we'll cut him a break. Um, but thank you to our moderators for doing a wonderful job. Uh, let's go to this. Who's the first button I shall press? I'll press this one. There we go. He's not even ready. Hello. I'm never ready. <laughs> You're never ready. I'm never ready. I'm never not even here now. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Good, good, good. Yeah. Busy week? Yeah, mental week this week. Mm. Yeah, I've had, I've had people around every day this week. Had Lovely. Dave Spears here. I've had uh, Keith uh, from Watford. Um, who else? Mine goes blank. There you go. Other people. So many people you've forgotten. Yeah, I even, I even repaired a, uh, a CS50 this afternoon. Oh, wow. Via remote. Oh. Guy, in the, guy in the States. There you go. Well, there you go. So... That doesn't clutter up the toilet, does it? So that's good. Oh, good yeah, all round. Absolutely. Yep. We like we we like that. We like that. Indeed. So, yeah. Good, good stuff. Incidentally, mm -hmm. um, something that occurred to me. Uh, next week, um, I'm completing a uh, a project, and I think that if everything goes very very well, I think we should video it. Okay. And, and we'll stick it up on the Patreon. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. 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 Oh, we'll talk about that. There you go. Mm. More exclusive content coming on our Patreon page. Um, be, uh, yeah, pretty rare. Okay. <laughs> as long as it's not Range Rovers and exhausts. It's not Range Rovers and exhausts. It's got something oh. to do with voices and motorways. Oh. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I know what yeah. you're talking about. I think yeah. I'm there. I think I'm there. And uh, yeah. She's making nice. She's making all the right signs at the moment. Oh. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, oh, nice. yeah. yeah. Very nice. Um, talking of Range Rovers and exhausts. Oh, my God. Good evening, sir. What? Big ball. <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking of a twin tailpipe. Show us your, show us yeah. your cherry bomb. Hello. Good evening. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Excellent. Yeah, you know, so-so. So-so? Oh, good, good. Went Have you been busy? I had, I had a dentist appointment today. Yeah, that was. Ugh. But yeah, don't worry. We, we've okay. only heard about this about nineteen times so far. Mm. No, 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 well, you know. <laughs> so, don't. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's but your smell. teeth are okay now, aren't they? That one is ah. that they worked on, and then they started talking about dentures, and I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm getting old. I'm getting. I'm. I'm. I'm almost old. As I feel as old as you look. But, Hello. Yeah. yeah, it will be. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Got a job for my 3D printer. That, uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. 3D Kent's 3D printed teeth. Yeah. yeah. There we go. That should go down like a lead balloon. Yeah. Indeed. 
So, but you, other than that, you're well, yes? I'm well. It's been a mad... Do you know what those weeks where you just think, I think I've got some time where I can just slow down a bit and deal with... No, it's just been full on and then mm. some. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be working the weekend. But Kent and I had a very lovely chat after you left the chat last night. At oh, the yes. Pub, and we were talking about essentially how to really emulate the 80 on these and we've come up well i came up with a cunning plan we're going to work some stuff essentially building the the two different parts of a cs80 which is the voicing structure and the and the uh, you know the the the, the sonic side of it then the performance side and do them as two separate units as a starting point so and it's just one of those things which is so nerdy i can't tell you but it's just deeply got me excited now very excited good yeah, and it, it helps you learn the machine as well, doesn't it, when you do stuff like that? Even, well, even yeah. as a specific, it really helps you sort of get your head well, around how that machine works. I have no idea. I just press the buttons like... Well, there you go. Like that. <laughs> That's how I do it. Indeed. Seems to work. Yeah, it does. It does yeah. indeed. Yeah. Anyway, um, welcome, everyone. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, um, just had another donation <laughs> there. For the PSN false teeth, like, mate, it's going to be more than five quid. Uh, I was looking into it after after that discussion. I'm thinking that uh, this is uh, thank you, though. Thank you. Yeah, I'm getting much. to that point in my life where it's just uh, it's not a good idea. Um, before we crack on with some of the topics, uh, oh yes, yeah, so um, imperfect asked uh, question: t-shirts. When um, uh-huh. I like questions like that, a brief and to the point. Uh, my answer will be equally brief: t-shirts soon. What about uh, briefs? Or briefs, briefly. Soon. Yes, t- PSM briefs. Boxers or jockeys? Boxers. Yeah. No, I went through a phase tight of tight leather now, pants, and now I'm more. I like a bit of support, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, they end up clacking on my knees. Um, so it's so it's a thong for you then. Thong yeah, thong. yeah. <clears throat> finger thong. Um, no, we are. We are. I, I know. I say this most weeks. We are investigating uh, ways of doing it. I just need to pick one and upload the designs. Um, but uh, yeah, we will do that soon, and uh, we will announce that everywhere uh, once we've done that. Um, so that's when. Um, but Wagyu says apparently some channels on YouTube have a store tab now. So I, I, I didn't know that. I will investigate. I don't know whether Ooh. that just links through to a, a third party store. Whether YouTube have a a store. You would have thought YouTube would have been on that whole thing. What with you know influencers and merch. So, yeah, I'll look into that. Thank you very much. Um, and Synchrotron, I don't know whether his tongue is par- planted firmly in his cheek, but when are we getting some modular patch ideas? Um, honestly, if I had an idea what a modular was, I'd give you some. But I I don't know. Kent can show you pictures of cables. Lots of pictures yeah, of, lots yeah. of yeah. cables. Lots of cables. Yeah, that, that, is the patch, that is a patch idea. Use a cable. Yeah, lots of, yeah. yeah there, you there you go. go. Use some yeah. cables. Yeah. Use cables to make a new patch. You come here for cutting edge knowledge and knowledge. News. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. All right. Um I do you know, I would love to say, yes, we'll do that soon, but maybe we maybe we maybe I do need to to bite the bullet and we'll get like a, a, a modular expert on Not with those teeth you can't. Well no, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not bite too hard Had a patch as the actress said to the bishop um, yes. <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah. Oh, don't worry about the spelling honestly I've seen worse spellings in my name it's fine um, so yes well, Kent, um, Kent could do a little something with his little well we did we did, yeah, we did a Behringer System 55 special maybe we could do another one I don't know because um, the thing with modulus Euro, Euro rack particularly is it's kind of they're all the same you, Different outputs, different, you know, slightly different things, but essentially, once you know one set of things, you know all of them. Mm. So, just basics in patching and how to get these things might be a really, really good theme at some point. Yeah. What do you think, mm. Kent? Yes. Maybe I could do a Synclavia style video where somebody loans me a Euro rack thing and I put it on my desk completely sight unseen. <laughs> And try and make a patch out of it. I'd, I'd like to think I'd be more successful at that than figuring out how the Synclavia regen works. What um, you want is you want to get Brooksy in. Yeah, yes. that's a good idea. Actually, we should get Andy and Grace. 
to do a Can session. we afford both of them? Uh, I think we could. I think we could push the boat out for those two. Because I, hmm. I know Brooks is a bit squirrel-like, isn't he? I mean, you, you sort of like... You dang, yeah, he, lo he, lo he loves ferreting around in nuts. Yeah, it's sort of like yeah. dangle, a, dangle some cheese and draw him in. Yeah. We'll get listen. To do, do some patching. He's we not shy. Could, we don't have to give them both a tea bag. We could share no. one between them. No, you make a pot. Yeah. The, he's, a pot. He's, he's already thrown his hat into the ring. There you go. Look at that. There you go. I do modular a bit. We're yeah. still waiting for your classical composition at Christmas. Mr. Brooks. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, we're still waiting for the one I was going to do with Matt. Yeah. Last yeah. Christmas. <laughs> and Rob is still waiting for my E4 XT. I know, which has now been upgraded. Yeah, it might include a D550 as well. Then. Actually, yeah. our, our good friend of the show, Dave Allen, would ask me how how we got on with the with the track. And I went, oh, oof. yeah, well. Oof. Oh. We've, had, we've had teeth to think about. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, Amanda is in the chat. Yes, we have been talking on and off about a crossover show. We, I was speaking um, with Amanda. It wasn't that long ago. We, we, we might do a a, a crossover. That would be you know, Process Network meets Cats in TV. Do I have to wear a dress? Be, uh, but no, you have to wear a cat. Uh, okay, I'm yeah. not doing it if I can't wear a dress. Okay. Well, you wear a dress if you like. Well, wear a yeah. dress that's got a picture of a cat on it. I can, I've got a bask. I was going to. I was just going to pull up my t-shirt because I've had my um, no <laughs> easy. Uh, I had my um, cats on synthesizers in space shirt, but oh, yeah. I changed. Uh, so I, I, I shan't do that. Uh, anyway, we're wasting valuable time. Um, are we? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh and can <laughs> I do, can I do a quick shout out to someone? Go I've for got it. A pal of mine. Pal of mine who's probably watching the show for the first time tonight. His name's Phil Jones. He's a bit of an <coughs> electronics synthesis, got his own acts and things and releases. He's a lovely man, lives locally. Evening, Phil. <laughs> there you go. Welcome. Welcome. Excellent stuff. Um, he's good. Got teeth. Okay. He's got what? what, what? He's got teeth. teeth. Okay. What are you trying to say? I've still got some. Um, that he can lend him. I th uh, do you know what I think we should do? I I think yes. Uh, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to go. I, I think whilst we're on the subject of uh, bigging ourselves up, we should tell everybody what you will now get if you subscribe to us. Yes, uh, over at uh, Patreon, Patreon.com yep. forward slash Prosynth Network. Um. We've got two brand new freebies for all our Patreon subscribers. And they come from, as the first one did, so we now have three in total, they come from the wonderful, the brilliant, the gorgeous, the hirsutely challenged Mark Barnes. Um, Mark got in touch with me a while back. He said, I've got... Um, Actually, no, what he said was, I got a free bunch of sounds. Would you like to have it for your Patreon channel? And I was like, yes, please. I'd love that. So he gave us a free bank of sounds for the wave state, the Korg wave state. And that's part of the, uh, that was the initial offering. And then um, a little while ago, he says, I've got some more stuff for you. I'm not going to do the Scottish accent anymore because it'll probably kill me. Um, I've got some new stuff. And, and here it is. The, the first bank, or the, the, sorry, the second of our three free banks of sounds for the ever popular ASM Hydrosynth. Um, coming from uh, Mark Barn Sounds. And if you want to demo that, just go to the uh, the uh, Patreon page and there's a video there you can go and watch. And if you like it, it's there. You just download MB Hydro Volume 1.zip and uh, download those and install them onto your um, onto your Hydrosynth. And I believe it will work on both Hydrosynths because it was designed for the original one. So it should also work. Um on the deluxe version and the desktop version and the explorer version so there what about my stylophone will it work on that no rubbish no. unless hydrosynth did a stylophone which would be oh. rather cool and then literally a day after well, actually no it's the same day a free bank of roland jdxa sounds for you all uh, again from uh, the excellent mark barnes um it's a volume of uh, J. Now I, I can't vouch for these, but I, given it is a, other work is brilliant. Um, 
th these will be good. I don't have a JDXA. But for those of you that do, bam, there you go. There is a, a, a third bank of sounds that you can have free of charge if you are a Patreon subscriber. So don't say we, we don't come through on our promises. And a huge thank you to Mark. Yeah. And we've got to mention his gorgeous, lovely wife, Cheryl, as well, because um, they, they come as a pair, basically. Um, no jokes. They, anyway, they've donated three banks of sounds for our Patreon channel. And if you sign up, you'll get those and there will be more stuff. Trust me, there will be more stuff um, as we as we kind of get it or have it donated. If you're out there and you want to donate something that we can give away for free on our Patreon channel for everyone, then get in touch. Um, but we will also be doing other things. And as Kent pointed out, we might be able to do some exclusive videos and put that on there as well. Um, I'm thinking should we do ad free versions of our videos? And I think that's just probably a little bit too much. I don't know. We'll see. Again, we could do a poll and find out what you guys and girls would like to have. Um, but mm. there you go. Go and sign up at our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash pro synth network. You get freebies, you help support the channel, and uh, there you go. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Synthesizers. Yay. They rock. Um, so let's go to our first piece of news. What? And if we do that, first of all, I need to do that. And then I need to go over here and play a little video for you. So this is the news that Kadamo's Mask 1 has just received a fairly significant update to version 3.4 and it is pretty significant because they've they've increased and added a whole bunch of stuff and it's completely free of charge. So uh, here's the list of things. Uh, 512 masks now available instead of 256. I think my maths is good enough to say that's effectively doubled. Yeah. Uh, so from 256 to 512 pretty cool uh, so there's a huge amount more that you can do with all of those um, you can now edit both oscillators at the same time uh, there's an added second 12 db filter on each voice uh, you've got added keyboard tracking parameters you've got um, new loop parameters for each oscillator um, there's some uh, user interface updates so it has a fairly limited user interface but with the use of the lighting and, and everything they've they've added things like LFO buttons lighting up to show what the activity of the LFO is so it's you know rapidly pulsing it's a fast LFO and it's slowly blah 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 um, you can navigate faster through the voices there's a plus 10 minus 10 increment feature um, the amount of memory slots has been increased from 400 to 600 uh, cutoff reacts faster when turning the knob, which is, uh, I've tr tried it and it does do that. And uh, there's some bug fixes in there as well. So there was a MIDI clock bug and some CC bugs. And all of the new features have had CCs added to them so you can control them from your doors uh, or wherever. Um, and uh, some of the presets have been tweaked as well. It's a pretty significant update. 600 and... memory slots rather than just 400, which exactly, is... Exactly, yeah. It's so... Good lots of things there and it's such a great little synth um and it's, it's just there because i've had it up you know, to, to to update it and i've been rediscovering it again and it does it sounds so good um it, it sounds very it's it, we had this de debate uh last night in the pub that um you know there's this uh video from anthony marinelli at the moment where he's talking to um mark barton who has helped cherry audio do a lot of their their recent uh, plugins, and he's written a paper that's that basically the headline is that digital is more analog than analog these days, 
and he explains all of this in the paper and we shan't go into it here because it can be a slightly contentious point but go and watch that video and download the paper and have a read um the reason i'm mentioning that is that this can sound very warm and analog and smooth and lovely but yeah a brand new update for it and of course it's free of charge to all uh kadamo mask one owners and mm. if you want there's also uh where are we some some free banks available on their website as well so everyone's well catered for and it's not had the love has it that perhaps it should have done i think i think this would be a really good thing to do a feature on at some point maybe could in, be yeah maybe in patreon it's a it's I, I still really 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 lust after this synth just because it's, it's so different so so different i love it i really i really want it what's the is it is the price still 1700 uh it's about 1900 euro yeah yeah it's not cheap mm. it is a very different gorgeous thing but it's yeah it, there's there's nothing else really quite like it um in terms of how it does its synthesis whether it does what well, yeah what the result is is worthy of um you know that price mark uh that price point um it's the playability as well and it's yeah it there is i was just about to say that um, slurring of uh, two semitones either way of the, the note that you're currently playing. And that you can do this kind of monos poly type performance. So you can have a patch that plays monophonically, but if you use the slurring, it then becomes kind of polyphonic just for those little bits. It's very clever. It's a player's instrument for sure. Mm -hmm. But it's well worth it. Yeah, we should um, maybe we should do something about that. And, uh, and show it off a little bit. I need to uh, reacquaint myself because uh, it's been a while. It's been sat in the corner there, sort of a little bit unloved while I'm trying to sort this place out. Mm. But it's great that they've done a done a, a yes a, you know, done the update. This is what three point zero four. They've done quite a few, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. The, the three point four now. They, they oh. yeah they did a two point zero and then they went straight to three one three two now three four. And they're also working on um, a new update for the Essence FM which was their first synth, uh, which apparently will be including um, its own sequencer. Uh, so, whoop, yeah, that should be fun indeed. Hmm. But if you have a Mask One, um, go to kadamo.org and download the update for free right there. My only quibble is that the Mac installation um, is a little convoluted. They see that the, the Windows one is very simple to do. Um, but with the Mac one, you have to like download uh, this this STM32 uh, programmer utility, which is a third party thing, and um, and yeah, it's it's a bit convoluted. Although it's better than it was. But there you go. One has a mask. Uh, I wondered what the joke was. I was trying to ignore him. There you go. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, let's see what else have we got news wise. Um, how about yeah this this one this this caused um, a little bit of consternation in, in certain places but um let's play a little bit of the trailer video and then we'll come back to discuss uh, its merits Hey there, Nate here for KVR Audio. We're going to take a look at getting set up with our new application, uh, KVR Studio Manager, uh, which is designed to help you organize and stay on top of updates for your plugins across your various uh, music computers. We're going to take a look at getting signed in and doing your first scan. Now, you will need access to a KVR Audio account. If you don't have one, you can head over to kvraudio.com. I'm going to stop it there because it, it does waffle on a bit. But this is a new thing from KVR. Now, KVR, uh, especially the forum, has been um, you know known and, and used by the great and the good for many, many years. And uh, there's some good things about it, some bad things about it. But what they've done is they've created this thing called the KVR Studio Manager. And what this does, if I just bring this into view, there we go, Um is it does a scan of your computer and then it takes that the resultant file that you know has all the information about all of your plugins and cross references it with their plugin database and i think it's pretty much widely accepted that the plugin database that kvr manage is probably the most extensive 
uh, database of plugins in terms of what plugins exist, what versions they exist in, what the latest version is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it then marries those two up and it says, okay, so here are all your plugins. I've, we've had a look at the KVR website and all of these plugins are up to date and all of these plugins um, are at a lower version than what we've got recorded. So you might want to go and update those, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, what this isn't, and a lot of people did kind of jump to conclusions, this isn't doing anything that's going to infiltrate your system. Uh, it's simply comparing a scan of your plugins on your machine with their database and then telling you where differences occur. It will then offer you the link to go to the manufacturer's site if you want to go and download updates from there, or you can just use the typical, you know, you know it's Cherry Audio, you go to sync and you download and, and manage your stuff through there. This, this isn't doing anything untoward. There's nothing mysterious going on in the background. They're not controlling your computer. They're just simply saying, we've got a great database. We've had a look at what you've got, and these are the differences. Now go ahead and, and do what you want to do. And it's, it's, it's scan is doing no more on your machine than your or digital audio workstation does every time you start that up. That's it. So you, you let your door do it, then this is just doing exactly the same thing. There are some added, should we call them benefits, because KVR aren't just doing this for the love of it. What they want to be able to do is to maybe target their communications to you. Now you can opt in or out of mailing lists, and those mailing lists will be based on the information yeah, so that yeah, if you've uh, yeah, so you've got all the Cherry Audio uh, plugins. When Cherry Audio update a plugin, you might get an email from KVR saying this plugin has been updated. So that's all it is. It's not it's not necessarily marketing as such, but it is. Mm. It's it's innocuous. I've been messing around with the beta, and it's it's it works very quickly, and it tells me exactly. You know, I, I actually went in and found a few plugins that I had you know there, there weren't any sort of plugin managers for them and it told me which ones were out of date and i went to that plugins website downloaded the update and next time you start up uh, kvr studio manager it says oh you've updated that and that matches and that's now up to date so that's fine that's all it is it's a helpful tool but what's re what's really helpful about it is just the fact that with even with only a few plugins or lots whatever you happen to have there are so many that you don't tend to update them unless something new comes along and the the updates often add new functionality and fix little issues that you didn't know existed and they make yeah. the whole process you otherwise wouldn't do it and it's they take you you know they give you a link to the manufacturer you click on that you do it and then bang you're away it's just a way of keeping you know of of remembering that you need to update some of this stuff and it does make a difference it really does yeah so yeah it was i, I just when i posted this in into our facebook group like, there was a few people that uh, jumped in and said oh i'm not going to let them into my computer but they're not doing anything that's not uh, already happening with yeah, all your that other you don't apps. do every time you fire up your door because every time you fire up logic or ableton or whatever it compares the database it created when it did the, the initial scan with what's in there at the moment and says oh i see you've updated these three plugins so we'll we'll check those and make sure they're compatible with our door and then off you go and it's not doing anything that you don't already do all it's doing is it's comparing the result of your scan with the results of their database and saying here are some differences now go ahead and fix them do what you like with them and, and there is some added... and yeah. sorry and curiously this all you know, the same thing applies if you've got video um uh video apps of, of of one sort or another that allow you to you know edit videos and do whatever an awful lot of those have plug-in architectures they support vst vst3s um, all of those different formats are supported and if you've got out of date plugins with the latest updates for whichever your particular uh, non-linear editor is it can cause issues if you're using them so this is just a, this is a very very good 
lightweight tool that's not intrusive. It, yeah, incredibly lightweight. And also, don't forget that a, a, a lot of independent plugin developers use the KVR forums as their main point of contact between them and the customers. So Yuhi are, are big users of the KVR forum. And one of the things this this will do is that if you have UHE plugins, if you click on the, the UHE plugin in the KVR Studio Manager, it will provide you direct links to their forums. So it's just make it's just making things a lot easier for you. But you know, the, at the end of the day, if you're worried about it, don't use don't it. Install it. Don't use it. What do you think, Ken? I mean, you are the master of collecting yeah. an inordinate amount of plugins. Oh, well. My my Mac is already full of um, the various downloaders that come from various companies anyway that checks whether you got new versions of your plugins. Um, so, like for instance, Native Instrument, you call up Native Access and you go, oh, this one needs mm -hmm. update. This, there's an update for this, there's an update for that. Cherry Audio got one. Yep. East to West have got one. Spitfire Audio have got one. They've all gone. Um, so the computer's already full up with <laughs> what this is yep. all right it's, this is a one-stop shop uh i get that um i can understand some people going yeah but you know behind the scenes you know essentially what it is is kvr get to know what everybody's using and that i you know yeah, it's ripe for targeted a advertising yeah in a, in a roundabout way whether it turns up on your facebook or whatever yeah. but there again that's the planet we live on now isn't it i suppose so well there's always a trade-off isn't there you know that of information between customer and you know uh organ you know, corporate organization whatever yeah um and they're providing a service and yes if you opt in and it is an opt-in if you opt in and say yes i would like to receive my uh you know emails about updates and things from plug-in manufacturers that i currently have yeah then then fine but if you don't want that you just turn it off um yeah, yeah i get uh, yeah, i see that yeah. i see that. and, but and that's if that not developer... the reason but that's not the reason i'm not going to put it on mm. there's one thing on that page that i went nah and that is the word beta oh yeah okay i'm i'm not do i'm not going down that road anymore <laughs> do you know what i mean i've got mm. this thing working now <laughs> no no betas thank you yeah. You get it sorted out, and then I'll have a look at it. Well, actually, I mean, I, I, th I mean, I'm always going in for you know, oh, something new. I'll give that a try, and I've, been, I've, I've put it on my system and run it, and it did its initial scan very quickly. It, yeah, there was no crashes. Um, I know, I think somebody in our Facebook group said that they had a, a small issue, and they've reported that, but it seems to be pretty well down the line. I don't think it's too far away from being like a, a, a release candidate. Um, <coughs> but yeah, there's uh, there's always going to be some people who just think the worst, and maybe that's a good you know good place to come from. But you know, this isn't some new upstart. This is KVR who have been around for blooming years. Yeah. Um, and their their database of, of plugins is probably the best that there is, especially you know, it is a one stop place. I mean, there are. So, and I'm not. I'm not saying this as a, as a criticism in any shape or form whatsoever. But you take a um, a developer like Full Bucket Music, who do those great Korg related um, plugins or Korg inspired, should we say, plugins. Um, the one thing that they don't have is a plugin manager, but that's fine because they're they're giving those things away for free, and you can donate if you want to. Yeah, they do. There, there is. Um, so I, I may mentioned this before, and somebody in the chat said, oh, but there is something you can use for Full Bucket Music. And it's a, an open source, similar sort of thing to this. But the developer has to do something at their end for it to show up in this tool. And I think that tool's Windows only. So, it, you know, it's, so now I can, do, I can find that which uh, Full Bucket Music plugins have been updated without having to go to the full bucket music page and click on every individual one and check the date on the plugins last update which is how i normally find out that i'm you know maybe behind on one or two of them mm. so it it's made that part uh, a lot easier sure like you say 
Cherry Audio, Korg, Roland, Native Instruments. They all have their own different ways of doing it. Uh, you know, Arturia do. Some will but run in a, the background, but some there's won't. Also all the, there's also all the effects, the VSTI effects mm -hmm. that, that, that are out there as well. And that's, that's another area. And, and also, if you're updating instruments, quite often with the instruments, you're also getting updated, you know, additional sound banks, yeah, yeah. a whole bunch of other stuff. It's just, you know, it's a one-stop shop. And, yeah. and I, I get your point about beta, Kent, but I've I just laid out a hundred and something quid for a, 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 a to update a video a, a photographic thing I've got Topaz which mm. included a brand new feature which I tried and it crashed it straight away and only afterwards did I notice it said beta it's I've paid for that functionality but, but it's don't only after I, you know so how much of stuff is released nowadays hardware and software that is effectively still in beta they just sell it as a product of parts of the code yeah. are in beta yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, I'm not, I, I tried this. I think it works well. It's great. Given the you choice, know. if, if, if um, KVR or let's just pick out, uh, I don't know, Plugin Boutique, for example, who's, who are a, you know, or JRR Shop or, you know, or any of those kind of plugin retailers that sell plugins from everybody, if one of those came up with one of these, I know which one I'd prefer to use. One from a company that isn't trying to sell me plugins, as opposed to the one that is. So I don't know. Yeah. But as we say, with anything like this, you don't have to use it, um, and that's fine. Nobody's no, I think gonna, I'll use yeah. it, but like I when say, it's not I, beta, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll, we'll we'll and... take the pain for you. We'll take. Yeah, the pain for I'll, you. I'll wait a little. It's like I'm, I'm only I'm not going to watch June until the third one's out. No. And then watch binge the, the whole three together. Binge the whole three, yeah, yeah, not. Yeah. And I've been finding it surprisingly easy to do. Yeah, yeah, I must well, go and watch June too. Yeah, let's go and do that. Anyway, KVR Studio Manager, um, kvraudio.com dot com forward slash kvr hyphen studio hyphen manager. I do believe the admins have uh, thrown the link into the chat. If you want to go and download it, if not, don't click on it because <laughs> they might come and get you. Anyway. Uh, moving on, uh, it's what's a the beautiful time? plugin. Beautiful yeah. plugin. Beautiful plugin. Best plugin in the world. I made yeah. it myself. Very ge genius. Um, let's let's talk. Let's get to some really really good stuff. Okay, so we we've got some fluffy things out <laughs> really? of the way. Let's let's talk about some something that's really actually rather chuffing good. is a 37-key, expandable, semi-modular analog synthesizer built on the sounds and innovations found in the award-winning Taiga desktop. The physical size of Taiga keyboard has allowed us to spread out the user interface and expand the modulation options while retaining the innovative analog synth engine and semi-modular flexibility. So there you go, this is Taiga keyboard. Um, a year ago, we had the Taiga desktop unit and lots of people got very excited about it. It's kind of a, a semi-modular uh, device. Um, let me just throw that up onto the screen. There it is. No, that's the wrong one. Uh, let's press that button and then press that button. And then there it is. Um, so t yeah, Tiger Desktop, as you can see on the left there, nice synthesizer with loads of patch points at the bottom there. Now taken that, move the patch points to the top because that makes sense. And giving us uh, a, a 37 note keyboard version of it with uh, everything you'd expect from a keyboard synth and, of course, all of the features and some extra bits from the Tiger desktop, including uh, what is, if you look on the right hand side, there, you'll see there's, there's, a, there's a panel. And if you remove that panel, you can put in some Eurorack, because why not? And even though that's not my thing, I think that's a bloody good idea because you can now make your kind of custom Tiger unit. And you can change it at will uh, if you want to. But the sound of this thing is gorgeous. I really, really like this. Um, a lot of fuss is made about their filter. And it is, it's just sounds lush. 
I mean, it really, really is a very lovely sounding thing. And now with the space of the keyboard design, they're able to move the controls and give them a bit more room to breathe. You've got a keyboard to play it with. And of course you can now customize it with your own um, Euro app modules, be they extra oscillators or filters or effects, do what you want. It's entirely up to you. Um, I think this is a, a brilliant thing. Um, and they make great videos as well. They, they did a whole series of videos for this. And they're just always a little bit uh, left field and, and, and odd, but in a really, really nice endearing way. Um, so yeah, go and watch those if you can. But yeah, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous thing, both in, in terms of you know looks and its sound. It's not particularly cheap. Um, we'll come to the price in just a moment. Before we do, um, thoughts on this? Mr. Spong, what do you think about this? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, now this is something I don't have to R&D now. Thanks for that, guys. Thanks for that, Pittsburgh. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> this is something I was looking into. It was an idea I was having, and they got there first. Fucking hell. There you go. That's that's the way it goes. They they got to the post first. All right, cool. I can tell you it'll be a brilliant idea because I thought of it first. There you go. <laughs> 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 They're not going to believe that for a moment, mind. No. But, um, yeah, no, this this is the the next logical step. Yeah. This, this, this was, well, I'm surprised it's taken this long, but, yeah, this is the next logical step. Uh, of uh, you know doing this kind of thing, so yeah, it'll be yeah, it'll be great. So, but I must admit, the thing that's going to be make or break on this, is, as you mentioned earlier, is the price. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting from the way you haven't said the price. It's going to. Be, it's not awful. It's not awful. It's not awful, but it's you know it's certainly not. 37 note keyboard you know you the, yeah yeah you, know, you might think that a 37 note keyboard will probably sit somewhere between the it's cheaper than a than a 44 note keyboard true if yeah. you know what i mean go on how much is nope. this Pete? well oh yeah all right i'll tell you it's 1359 euros okay so it's not awful may i but it's not something you you know you can just nip out and buy how much was the hydro 49 again uh well, you can get it now for just over a grand how the, for, the 49 it's, like, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. it's on offer in certain places the yeah, desktop no, version what? is 800 by the way but uh, yeah sorry andrew you you wanted to say so there are other um chassis with a keyboard that you can put euro rack into but guess what you have to put euro rack into and that's a real disincentive for anyone frightened of euro rack or wanting to explore it but actually have a clue what's going on what this does is gives you a really lovely synth yeah it's mono but it's a lovely synth it's with duophonic actually i think is it duophonic even yeah, better it's, yeah. so it's duophonic and you can put in three euro rack models three you know or one big one, or one and two, or whatever, mm. which means you can start playing around with the Eurorack universe at a pretty good price and have a synth that works straight away. You can just jump straight in and diddle with it. I think it's a really good thing. Mm. Um, mm. And for this kind of... I think, I think there's going to be a market for this. I really do. And I like the way they've designed it. And if you want to, you know, explore further, as a way of getting into Euro, it's really good. And if you still don't get it, you've still got a great little synth. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, and it is a great little, it sounds amazing. Yeah. I wanted to avoid the, the terms buttery smooth filter, but when you listen to it, it is very buttery and smooth. As uh, slick as weasel shit. Yeah, it, yeah that, yeah. I'm... I'm that probably doesn't go well with the marketing team but it's a lovely lovely synth and you know the, the the desktop version you know got a lot of people very moist about the gusset when it came out and rightly so because it you know it sounds amazing um and the keyboard version is is doing you know pretty much the same sort of thing now um 
and that little extra bay on the right you know for for you modular nuts i think uh is is um is a great idea because it just enables every tiger desk uh, every tiger keyboard version to be unique um which you know which yeah. is what what uh, i guess is what a lot of the appeal of euro rack is is that you make something that's completely unique for you and and what you want and this mean, I mean, this means you can bang in, you know, some more oscillators, different filters, sequences, yeah. do a, a whole bunch of other things. And guess what? It's not that expensive buying single units or two or three little units mm. or, you know, buying units of Eurorack isn't expensive. So once you've got it, you, you've got a platform in which you can run some Eurorack, albeit limited, but it, it suddenly opens this up. And as Robbie said, it turns it into something quite unique. Mm. I really like the idea. I think it's a really good idea that yeah. they stole from you, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just check in the bottom, you know, the, in, in the credits at the bottom of the website, you know, copyright, you know. But <laughs> yeah. no. They're bringing out Grandpa Glyph next. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's, I mean, it, I like these little synths and I like the colours and I, it just looks nice. And, I'm, you know, would this get me into modular? Probably not. I'd probably, you know, if, if if somebody gave me one of these, I'd quite happily use it just as is. I think I'd probably, you know, need a loaded Boris gun to get you into your own rack. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I need to fire it as well. <laughs> no. Um, well, do you know, if Pittsburgh are watching, because I know Rich has been doing the rounds, he's been on um, Sonic State for the last two or three weeks. If you're watching Pittsburgh Mod, by all means, send me one and we'll see. <laughs> we'll do an experiment. Even There's... better, send me one. Not yeah, send, send, send me all one. one. I'm prettier. Send us all one. I'm and pretty we'll here. And yes, it has real wood cheeks. Um, Keith actually said that uh, somewhere in the UK is selling this 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 for eleven nine nine. Well, that's UK. really good. So that's Glasgow. I think it was yeah. Glasgow. It was in Glasgow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Signal sounds. The penguin uh, of death quite wants one. Pittsburgh. Oh. But I like that, and they're bringing something new to Superbooth. So uh, I believe Richard will be there as well. So we'll ha we'll have to corner him and see if he'll uh, let me sit one of those into my suitcase. Hmm. As the actress said to the book. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that is um, the... <laughs> yes. <Yeah. What? laughs> where's where's the meal come from? Um, no see idea. what he does with exhausts. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's all yeah. oh, right. Fair enough. Now we we'll have to it. check what the ports are like at the back, <laughs> <laughs> whether whether they get clogged or not. <coughs> um, but yeah, there you go. This is the uh, the Tiger um, desktop. No, the Tiger keyboard, which now complements the Tiger desktop, um, and uh, just it's a lovely, wonderful thing, and and more power to them. So, um, gentlemen, I think we we deserve a break. And I think um, our audience, whose numbers are rapidly rising, we're, we're nearly at 200 people Whoa. who are chomping at the bits, shall we say, I oh. guess, for a little bit of Alex Ball. Get off my bits. And okay. I think... Um, I'll I go think and wash we, my car. Yeah, yeah. But we'll, I'll go tea. and make some tea, and um, we'll, we'll let you go on. So just to explain... Um, Alex can't be here tonight because he was uh, he had other commitments that he couldn't get out of. And so he said, look, look can we pre-record it? And I said, yes, of course, we can do that. And then we can just play the video and um, people can watch and, and make of it what you will. And the reason we've got Alex on will become apparent in the video. But I'll tell you now, he's um, done a new video. Um, one of his brilliant videos is all about the Polymoog and the different types of Polymoog and what the differences are. And he uses Gary Newman as the kind of the central point of you know doing this because obviously Gary was very famous for using the Vox Humana patch on there. And because that patch is so sought after, Alex has done a sample bank of that. He's meticulously sampled every note. And there's 70, 70 something keys. I think on, she's 76 notes. She? Something like that, yeah. So he sampled every one. Seventy six. I can't remember. Yeah, he's sampled every one at different velocities, um, manually. So he's not got one of these robots that does the exact same pressure on each key. He's had to do each one and make sure. And you know, and he's released that sample pack 
through the Bob Moog Foundation, where you can go and buy that for 12 quid. And we'll give you the links to that a little bit later. 12 quid will get you the, this meticulously sampled Vox Humana patch. So if you want to express your inner Newman or your outer Newman, um, then you can do it for 12 quid and you can support the Bob Moog Foundation as well. So without further ado, um, let's introduce to you the one and the only Alex Ball. Alex Ball. Alex, welcome back to the show. This is your second time, albeit this time it's recorded. Yes. How we're, we... coming, we're coming to you from the past. From the past, yes. Which is okay. which is like my channel. It's all about the past. So well, this is this is true. This, this is fitting. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. How how the devil are you? I'm good. I'm busy, but I'm good. Yeah. So That's thank you good. for thank you for accommodating me. Not at I all. Can't, can't even. Well, be no, there. we we you know we will never pass the the chance of having you on the show live or taped. Either way, it doesn't make any difference. Um, just to have you on is fantastic. I was just trying to remember the last time you were on. It was a while back, and it was a slightly. Uh, um, it was an experience. <laughs> Was that when Gert also when Gert him? turned up? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that was that was a. We still people still talk about that show to this day. <laughs> seriously, they do. They always, seriously, when's Gert coming back? Um, so yeah, maybe we'll have to we'll sort something out. Anyway, listen. Um, the reason we've got you here is, is a very special reason. Everybody knows you as, um, I guess, the, the a synthesizer historian, documentarian, um, all round lovely person, great musician. Um, and you do, you do these wonderful uh, videos. Sometimes they're very long, like the ARP one and the Roland one. Sometimes they're quite short and sweet. And most of the time, they're somewhere in between the two. And you, you've you got some uh, equipment that's come through the studio and you spent some time to tell us all about it and show us what it can do. And you do some lovely demos. Um, and you've sort of done the same thing here, but there's there's kind of an added bonus benefit to, to this video. So for everyone that's watching, what uh, Alex has been able to get hold of is both versions of the very famous Moog Polymoog. Um, and there were two different versions. There was the 203A and the 280. Did they have an A after it as well? It did. It did. There you go. And the 203 was the programmable one, so you could actually make your own sounds. And then the 280 was just like a preset machine. And so you, you've you managed to get two of these in into your studio to, to do some work on. So first of all, tell us, how did you manage to get two polymogs uh, <laughs> into your little den there? Yeah, so... I it I've got a, a bucket list of like vintage synths that I want to do video uh, videos on, and the Polymoog was def Polymoogs I should probably say mm -hmm. were definitely on the list. And because I'm dealing with so many different things at any given time, I can't look at something until I know I'm going to do a video on it, because otherwise it's just too much information. <laughs> so I knew there was two Polymoogs, but I didn't yet know why there were two Polymoogs or what the difference was. Um, and I was just waiting for an opportunity. And then it turns out that um, a guy, I've forgotten his name, which is awful. I should have looked this up. He was a TV composer, quite a successful TV composer. His son was selling off his old gear. And mm -hmm. amongst the gear were a couple of synths. I think there was a Yamaha CS60 and some other bits and pieces. But there was this, this um, Polymoog 203A. So there mm -hmm. was the... The, the programmable one, the, the earliest one. Uh, and a friend of mine acquired it. And of course, <laughs> Kent Spong is probably wincing now. <laughs> they're always broken. Of course, they're always broken if they haven't been, you know, looked at for a while. But um, he knows the right people. So uh, it was Danny at Hideaway Studios went through it. And oh, yes. of course, she knows exactly what she's doing. So of course got she it. does, yeah. Yeah, got it uh, all singing. And... So I got an opportunity to borrow it uh, and borrow one that actually worked and that was, you know, uh, did all the things it's supposed to do because, you know, they <laughs> usually partially work or don't work at all. So then I had the first Polymoog, so I was making a video on that. And then I realized, of course, that there's this sound, which I knew was the Polymoog, which is Gary Newman, which is the yeah. um, Vox Humana. And I'm thinking, where's Vox Humana on this? And of course, it's not on that version of the Polymoog. So exactly. I've then discovered that there's another one, that it's not programmable like the first one. It's um, much more limited. There's just a few basic controls. But 
it's got that one sound in it. And in fact, it's got some additional cir circuitry that means you can't even do the sound on the the earlier one. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, because I wanted to do the video with a kind of Gary Newman angle um, because a lot of people had also said, can you do a video about Gary Newman? And so I thought, well, here's a perfect opportunity to tick off both Gary Newman yeah. and the Polymoog. So um, I was like, where am I going to find the other one? And then by total fluke, a friend of a friend uh, is Andy Boucher, who was, uh, mm -hmm. of course, in Beats International back in the day, yeah. works a lot with, I think still works with Fatboy Slim. And he's got the other one. And someone put in a word and he said, do you want to borrow it? Which nice. obviously the answer was yes. So <laughs> yeah. before I knew it, I had both of them. Um, and then, yeah, and they both worked amazingly. So I was able to actually do a video about the two, about the difference between the two, about the, the history of the instrument itself. Because interestingly, it's not it's nothing to do with Bob Moog. Um, yeah. It's David Luce, who was the guy behind it. Although it's got circuitry in it that was, of course, Moog circuitry. So you could argue that Bob Moog had something to do with it, but not directly. So um, I was able to, yeah, f find out the story of how it came to pass and about these polycom chips, which I didn't know about, and about how Norlin had put all this money into them and wanted to get their money back, get their investment back, which is why they rushed it out when it wasn't finished, which is why it's so <laughs> kind of infamous. Although, actually, I have discovered from Danny that the later ones, uh, early on, they had something like a 200% return rate or something where it had to come back twice before, <laughs> which is... <laughs> hilarious you buy it it breaks it goes back it breaks yeah. it goes back and now it works but by the end they'd had the time to sort it out so if you get one that's a later serial or that was later in the production run actually it was probably all right from the um from the off although i, I can hear kent saying no it's not <laughs> <laughs> i went to kent's once and he had like three polymogs just stacked up by the just front three. door I think it was three, and he just scowled at them as we yes. went past. <laughs> he hates yeah. them, doesn't he? There, um, there is a list of synthesizers that Kent you know, has a list of you know ones that <laughs> hate you know that uh, memory Moogs, Profit Five Rev Twos. Yeah, they're, they're all there. Yeah, is a memory Moog bad? That's another one on my to uh, my list. Actually, I borrowed one once, and funnily enough, I powered it on and played about fifteen seconds, and it just went and went out <laughs> so maybe I, that's yeah. i think what it is with the memory mode is not so much that they're awful synthesizers or badly made is that he sees a lot of them and they're just a pain in the backside to fix i'm yeah, sure right. kent will after this um tell us all about those but he's always complaining about another memory mode and um because there was a, a a later kind of upgrade to them i think was it um the plus yeah, but there was a like a company that did sort of like they added their name to it. What was the name? Oh, it's completely. But he reckons those ones are the best ones to get. Um, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, what a bit like a Forat Lin nine thousand or something like another. I, company I think who... so. I'm. I'm going. People are in the chat are probably right now going, and I'm because I'll I'll be doing the show live. I'll be able to correct myself after this. I right. will do my research, which I should have done really before this, but we weren't talking memory mugs. We're talking no, polymogs. We are talking um, polymogs. So you've got these two polymogs. Um, obviously one's a programmable, one's a preset one. They both look like elaborate coffee tables. They all have those little divots at the back, don't they? So you, <laughs> yeah. your fags don't fall off uh, in your ashtray mid gig oh, or something. So of the time. I like yeah. the way that the, the top comes off and it, it, it is like a cheap car, the way it like, <laughs> clips off. It just reminded me of, yeah, that era, like my parents having a, I don't know what it was, a Hillman Dimp or something <laughs> yeah. in the, in the, <laughs> back in the day. Yeah, it was. it's that kind of, and it does, yeah, look like a bit of furniture. Just, it yeah. would, you just need, I needed like orange carpets and like, <laughs> like, those round egg chairs or something yeah just, raffia chairs that's it yeah, <laughs> yeah. otherwise it, it just you don't feel quite the experience of yeah yeah they're, yeah. they're very of the time very interesting they're, they're very distinctive sound to them i yes. i've not played anything that sounds like them. they're not uh forgiving if like a you know a juno is famously kind of a sweet spot where you can't go wrong it's like the opposite of that right it, uh, the the pro not the programmable one in particular because you really and someone like Danny can explain why, but you really have to gain stage them 
otherwise you get these this build up and you get this sudden like whoa yeah. and you get there's all in between the really amazing sounds there are some terrible sounds <laughs> so uh, that was quite interesting because you, you get that with instruments don't you that they they have their amazing sounds but also the nature of the way they work and how you set the sounds up they have things in between that aren't yeah. so great so yeah that was that was interesting but the later one is much more kind of preset based and more kind of press a button and go mm -hmm. and was designed to be more forgiving so that one's harder to make sound you know make bad sounds on but it's certainly yeah a very distinctive sound a very it's 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 not fat like you know well apart from some sounds if you use some of the filtering and like especially the resonator section but a lot of the sounds are these very kind of thin strange otherworldly kind of mm. sounds which i think is the way the filtering works on the polycom chips and stuff but um yes once you you start playing it you're like this is really quite beautiful especially when you realize there's an absolute stack of multiple you know there's outputs on the back for all these different versions of the sound that come out of the programmable right. one which I, I didn't know that either i was like there's mode and resonators and filter and direct and then auxiliary which is like external audio and they're all versions of the same sound but that have gone through different signal paths and they right. come out so if you set them up on a mixer and pan them around and play something it's like okay that's actually far more interesting than i thought it would be because it, it kind of looks well, it looks like and gets grouped in with string synths a bit yeah uh, uh, but it's not that at all it, and i had in my mind i had it wrong i was kind of like it's kind of like a krumar or a selena or something but no not at all it's um is it so so is, is it fully polyphonic <laughs> where's my that you just divide down <laughs> uh, i i was going to tell you a funny story the oh. i saw i saw mark doty for the first time <laughs> in person uh last year and whilst i was i think this is the only time i've ever said like not proper polyphonic <laughs> and i and i described something as not proper polyphonic <laughs> about a meter away from mark i don't know if it was like a oh, nervous right. reaction i just did yeah. it and uh and then yeah dave who was there looked at me like wow that was brave <laughs> <laughs> and i was like i don't know why i just said that but you know what i mean um no, he was very so. i couldn't but um yeah so it's uh, it's divided down oscillators kind of organ style and there's two and it's got this really weird nomenclature so it's like there's a parallel there are two oscillators one's a pulse wave one's a sawtooth and they're called like rank so I it's see. like rank mix and rank tuning i was like rank mix <laughs> yeah and everything on it's really weird and um or like beat frequency it'll say and i was like what's that if this is like a fine tuning um and those are yeah those are divided down but then for each key the the whole point of these polycom chips was that there was uh, a wave shaper i think filter amp and or two amps and an envelope so right. it is the articulation is per key yes yeah so it's it's not um paraphonic apart from if you use the low pass filter which is just one so that is then paraphonic and and the resonators are there's no external voltage control but they're just obviously one set of like three filters in mm. in parallel so yeah it's 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 difficult to describe what it is because <laughs> yeah. it's like it's there is articulation but it's divide down it's not paraphonic but then if you press that button it is <laughs> you know it's so yeah a very unique thing and very yeah you know beautiful object and beautiful sound you know you very unique sound i think i would say is what yeah. it is and very un moog because yeah know, you, you think moog you think fa you, yeah i was listening to something the other day that had a, a moog just a thumping you know 16th note da -da 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 thing and i was like oh my you can spot it it's a mile off can't you that moog yeah. sound and i was like it's interesting that the poly moog is just not that at all it's a completely no. different part of the moog story especially vox humana because that is you know what it's such an odd sound but it's such a kind of perfect sound because i guess that the whole point of synthesizers is you create 
new sounds that you wouldn't create with something else and that is a, you know a prime example of that mm. and um i can see why gary newman fell in love with it because it's yeah. um it just fit his aesthetic as, as well as kind of otherworldly and yeah strange and new um yeah, so yeah, I, I, I was not disappointed to finally experience yeah. the two, the two polymogs. Because yeah. as, as you say, it, it's kind of a, a unique item in the catalogue of, of, of Moog's history. And it is almost like a bit of a black sheep because it's always the one that, you know, most people would. That and the, is it the Sonic 6, I think, is another one <laughs> that people often say, oh, yeah, well, forget about that one because all the others are great. But the polymog has, has this reputation. Um, mostly I, I guess nowadays because of gary newman's use yeah. of vox humana which is all over a whole bunch of his really you know sort of great early stuff and is it isn't it funny that you know um moog the 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 the, the part that moog has had to blame gary newman's story because it was that thing behind you there that was left randomly in the studio by the previous yeah. occupant and he said what's this and it was like that's it that's what we're doing you know the, the guitars take a back seat <laughs> And then, you know, Chiway Army takes this big left turn and that comes uh, replicas. And for, I mean, I don't know about yourself, but for me, that album and that single Our Friends Electric was what, you know, kind of opened my eyes. I've clearly heard synthesizers before elsewhere, but just hadn't sort of, hadn't been excited by them. And then all of a sudden there was this and it was, a, I didn't know it was a Moog, it just sounded great. But then there's that. And then of course there's the Poly Moog sounds and Newman's kind of got this, this thing. So with your video you've you know, you've obviously got both of these these machines how did you sort of weave gary newman into that whole story what what have you done to you know, explain his use so yeah so i get having done the history of the original 203a and you know what that is and how it works we then get to the the second version and then i just say you know preset number one <laughs> you only have to hear like five seconds of it and you yeah. recognize it straight away and then i yeah talk specifically about how that preset was became kind of owned by gary newman i mean to be fair he did use other sounds on it but he it that one is so specific that it's probably it stands out um over the others you know like he did use the strings for example on the on the yeah. polymog i think he had eight polymogs at one point or something probably wow. due to the fact that they kept breaking down. They, they kept breaking down, and they t they were they had no choice but to take him on the road. Yeah. Because if you were going to do the song, it's not like oh, chuck it in a a sampler or yeah, a rack, rack yeah. mount module. It was you know take the polymogs on yeah. on tour, which is mad to think yeah. about now. But yeah, he had no choice. So uh, yeah, talk about that, and then it accumulates in me doing an entire cover of Cars. Oh, fantastic! Well. And I used. So it's my version of Cars. So it's got the Polymog in it, but it's actually got both Polymogs in it. And I didn't actually, I've just borrowed that for another project. So I didn't have the Mini Moog, so I used some other synths for other parts of it. So it's kind of my, my version of Cars. But I've, like, I've got to do Cars if I'm going to do Gary Newman. So, yeah, um, absolutely. Yes. Did, so the, did, I say, did the Odyssey cool. make a, a presence in that? Because didn't Curry have the Odyssey at the time? Oh, I, I don't know that they I used an Odyssey on that, but it no. wasn't because he wasn't on that album, was he? Um, I, I, yeah, it's all a bit sketchy. You no, know, that's right, because he was on the first one. But yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're but right. I don't have an Odyssey anymore. It's at the Art Foundation in Of in course the US. it is. Of yeah, course we, it is. We gave it a final send off at Synthfest a couple of years ago. And that's right. Yeah. I put it in a box and hoped it arrived there and it did. So it did. Yeah. <laughs> I've still got an avatar and a a 2600 of course. So. yeah absolutely. I'm, I'm i'm not doing badly for ops so but yeah i yeah i was going to say the other the other thing as well with um with cars is that main riff i did it my own way but no one's ever figured out what on earth this the sound is it's a mini moog mm -hmm. through something um and i think it might be double tracked but that that riff and it's on a bunch of tracks on that album and it sounds kind of guitarish as well Right. But people have spoken to, I think, Gary Newman and other people on the band. Is it Chris? I've forgotten the name of the guy. I should yeah. Have <laughs> We're going to say this for this whole, this whole talk. I should have looked this up before. <laughs> <laughs> but 
people are screaming it in the chat. But yeah, the guy, yeah. Chris, Chris, him, Chris, who, yeah. uh, who was like in the Chris. band, is it Payne, Chris? Um, yeah, I think so. He, uh, uh, yeah, I think Andy Boucher told me he he knows him or had got to speak to him somehow and said, "What what was the sound?" Because he's a massive Gary Newman fan. And he's like, "Can't remember." <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's just like inconsequential to them i guess it was just yeah. something they did in the studio and then they just use that sound repeatedly and people are tying themselves in knots trying to figure it out and i did listen to it and think what is that it's really and if you put the mix in like mono or, or like split the, st the stereo field and then like isolate certain channels it's like there's some it's like layered there's something going on which is yeah. obscuring what it actually is and apparently no one's actually quite figured out what on earth it is no. but it's he did do some funky stuff with the with the mini mag. I think yeah. there's MXR phase shifters were involved, right? You know the the little pedals, yeah. and So that that obviously blurs things, but yeah, that's he he, he did have a big thing for Moog, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Uh, and it, it, it was Chris Payne. I've just while you've been talking, I just uh, very quickly yes. googled it. So you you were right, Chris Payne. Um, yeah, I mean it, it, you find that with when you're trying to nail those sounds down from from history um very rarely unless it's a, such an obvious thing and i'm thinking you know d50 presets on love sexy or or right. uh you know jean-michel jarre's use of it it's so obvious it's that preset and it's it doesn't need anything no. uh, any processing because it had its own onboard effects and everything so there was no need whereas you go back a bit further and you know that yeah, you, know, you play a note on a Fairlight, it sounds awful. You know, so everything that you hear that's Fairlight has gone through some sort yeah. of signal chain processing, whether it's you know a bit of chorus, a bit of you know delay or whatever. Sometimes it's much more intricate, and most of the time the musicians don't care. Mm. It's just the, these. Uh, I've met so many musicians who who exactly said what you you've just recounted there that. You ask them, and they say, oh, "I don't know. It was just it was a synthesizer. I think it might have been this one. It the just made the sound I wanted." Yeah, the producer did something with a thing. Exactly. What's it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's only it takes a lot of people to kind of ask lots of questions and do lots of research to sort of get close. But most of the time, I, I still don't think we're we we get anywhere close to some of these things. It's just one of those beautiful things that a sound is made. That's the sound you want. And nowadays, of course, you just sample that sound, you lift it off the multi-track. Yep. But of course, back then, um, it, it wasn't so easy. So you've got both of these machines, and obviously go and watch Alex's video to learn more about those. We won't go into all of that detail here, but you have done something very special with that Vox Humana sound other than do a cover version of Cars. We Q have. Promotion. Yes, so. Uh, this kind of st stemmed from something I did for the Art Foundation last year, where I did a video about how Depeche Mode and, and, and um, Daniel Miller did their drums mm. in the early days. And I did it the same way they did and then made a sample pack and gave it to the Art Foundation, thought they could maybe sell it and raise some some funds. And it went down really well. So I thought, ooh, that's worth knowing, you know, because mm -hmm. obviously it's 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 got value for people which is great because then it's win-win isn't it of course so yeah when i got the polymerg i was like well wow, here's an opportunity to do something similar so i thought now, this is harder to sample you know drum samples are easier to do so i thought could i sample the whole thing and then i realized that would take about a month <laughs> so i thought okay vox humana is the the key thing so i sampled and it took blooming ages because i didn't realize this until you play it that it's it's touch sensitive right so if you play it it, you, if you don't get it consistent you get really lumpy samples that are very yeah you know um mismatched so i i spent a long time sampling <laughs> every single key on it twice until i had a, a a set of two two round robins essentially of every note that sounded smooth and that um captured the you know had good loops in them and stuff and i could capture it properly and then um a guy mario who goes by evil dragon i know mario uh, yeah you, you know mario the Sun. yeah ah okay there we go our old friend mario who has helped me up for <laughs> uh, i was asking him because he's helped me with stuff of some advice on programming it scripting it into contacts and he actually did it for me in the end which is absolute legend and awesome. and donated his time to do it so it's a it's a massive thank you to him so we made this contact patch 
and the samples are there and it sounds i'm i'm selfishly satisfied that i've got <laughs> <laughs> i've got like a vox humana that i can just bring up but we've got a really really good patch of it that really captures it it's just you just play a note you go yeah that's that's, that's it the one. that's the one and um so yeah so i've given it to the bob moog foundation and hopefully i think it's actually i don't want to say the price in case it's wrong but it's okay. not expensive because it's just it's one patch but it's one golden patch yeah um and one absolute classic patch so the idea is that people go and get it it's it's scripted for contact seven but the samples are there so you could drop them into something else if you okay. don't don't use contact um but yes yeah, so you then get that you get that the bob moog foundation can continue doing their brilliant work and mm -hmm. um so hopefully that's going to be a another win-win where it's yeah. you know a good thing for everybody absolutely it you know, it's really funny that you you mentioned mario who i've not spoken to for for a while now but obviously mario um was the guy that steve howell went to when steve eventually <laughs> after much fighting gave up hardware samples and said I, there's there is no future here it has to be software and so he you know he dived into to contact but needed somebody to do the scripting and, and mario came on board and did all of that stuff fantastically well but the funny thing was before all of that happened and this has just kind of popped into my head and i think it's it's kind of a kind of a full circle moment was that um steve and i worked um for for a while on the elisis fusion which was right. this much maligned workstation that was utterly brilliant under the hood looked like something out of buck rogers in the 25th century um and suffered from some some bugs early on which kind of sealed its fate but it found a niche it found a group of people and there's a guy in Belgium called uh, Jerry Peters, I think his, his name is, I hope I've pronounced that right, who's a massive Gary Newman fan. And um, Steve had some Polymoog samples, of which one, one of which was uh, Vox Humana. But they were, um, in Steve's traditional fashion, they were you know, what he called bonsai sampling. So they're very small footprint, but they, right. they sounded really good. Um, but he, I don't know where he'd got them from. They were, you know, some, some, somewhere he'd recorded a Polymoog and just used those. This guy from Belgium comes along and says, I've got a Polymoog here, you know, the, the 280 with the preset. Um, I can give you some samples. And so we got some samples and we actually put the Vox Humana patch out as part of a package of samples to try and keep the Elisis Fusion alive for a little bit longer in the marketplace. <laughs> so Steve did some paid for libraries, but he did a whole bunch of freebie libraries. And so it's it's weird now that that's kind of come around and Mario's had his hand in that with your well, stuff yeah. and you it's it never ceases to amaze me how for certain synthesizers one patch defines that whole machine. Yep. If you if you ask me apart from say the strings maybe if you ask me you know define a polymog I'm always going to say Vox Humana is the Vox Humana is the Gary Newman synth. Uh, yeah. It totally is. But actually, I discovered as well, on the other one, there's, uh, when you put the filter on, there's there's an envelope for it and there's an LFO, but there's a sample and hold. Right. And you, if you use the filter version, and obviously if it's, it's paraphonic, but if you hold a chord, you get this nice, bouncy, you know, sample and hold. And um, it's on um, an ELO song. And Mark mm -hmm. Doty pointed it out to me as, as he would. soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, my goodness. And actually, <laughs> once you start listening to it, you're like, that is so familiar because it's quite limited. So I think everybody was just like, oh, that's good. And just so there mm -hmm. is another sound that's not quite as obvious, which is the the earlier version, which is the the ELO one. And I've forgotten the name of the song. I should have looked it up before I came on the call. Well, we should have done research. <laughs> shouldn't we? we should have yeah. done research. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that yes there is more but the strings are very distinctive as well yes but there are some awful sounds in there you know things like um kind of vibes and uh and and well, i'm trying to think what else in there that's just was supposed to i was means to an end wasn't it i guess yeah. it was like we need a particular sound to sound like a an acoustic instrument of course it doesn't sound like that at all and no. you just ignore those sounds and it and in fact there's a guy who mods 
the earlier 203As and puts a board in so that you can do Vox Humana. And, and part of the way he has to do it is by hacking out one of the presets so, and to replace it. And um, so it's a choice of which awful sound you want to get rid of. Yeah. <laughs> but it'll always say whatever the heck it is unless you hacked away at the legend on the on the yeah the instrument itself but yes um you're right that it, it is pretty much that one sound that everybody knows but yes yeah. there is more to it if you if you start delving yeah i mean but we've i think i know is it jareth lackey that does those that's mods? Him. yeah Synth -pro. yeah that's it yeah in, in america i've seen i've seen a video of him doing that it, it's mm. yeah it's, wow um but it's it i mean if we want to recreate the, the whole of these uh, sounds from, from there, there are a number of uh, plugins out there and obviously other sample libraries that, that can do that and get you close. But to have an actual sample from an actual Polymo sample properly is, is going to be uh, a great thing. And the fact that by purchasing it, you're, you're helping a great cause, you know, the Bob Moog Foundation um, just makes it even better. So, um, yeah. so the video is, is out now. Yep. Um, oh, I say out now because yeah. We're, yeah. So in the future, it's out now. Yeah. Um, and you can watch it on your channel. And then mm -hmm. to buy this, they go to the Bob Bogue Foundation website. Yeah, there'll be um, there'll be a link which I'll um, the, the Bob Bogue Foundation are doing a little press release about it as well. Mm -hmm. So they'll have all this. They're they're very well organised. So they've they're, they'll have that lined up. But there'll be a link in the video description. I'm sure I can provide you with a with a link that you can yeah. chuck somewhere. Oh yeah, that'll, that'll come up on the screen. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, future me will put this. It'll be on the screen right now. And future me will be pushing those buttons. Cool nice. stuff. Yeah. Um, before we let you go, because it'd be remiss of me to to not. Um, what else can we expect to see from Alex Ball in 2024? Have you got anything sort of cool lined up that you can tell us yes. about? Was it all very yes, yes, I have. I I can't. Um, it's it's out of shot at the moment. I've got uh, a video coming out on the. Roland MC8, the very first micro composer, oh, yes. which I've related to Yellow Magic Orchestra. Right. So I will be creating a track in the style of Yellow Magic Orchestra using the MC8 to do all of the sequencing, which awesome. was insane I bet. Uh, and i will probably never do it ever again in my life <laughs> <laughs> but uh, actually i'm pretty good on it now like, oh there you go but uh, i I, th I really wanted to get that down on record because I, mm -hmm. I think you know in 100 years 200 years that will be quite an important piece of history i mean, I mean yeah. it's very important piece of history um in terms of computer music so yes that i've got the video on that i'm very excited i've i've acquired some other thing i'm going to give you a little Ooh. teaser of something and let you figure out what on earth i'm up to with something like this i spoke to you about this actually but i wound up finding one you did oh look oh, at that yeah da, 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 da. mr uh, mr longhurst will be happy with that protest yes he yeah. will so what on earth am i doing and i've acquired mm. some others what am i doing with 1990s was that yeah that is 90s 1990s rack mount stuff <laughs> i've got a video that required acquiring some stuff which i'm really excited about making um and i don't want to give it away because no, i yeah. don't i don't want to, someone to make the video before me and now that, that that's be, a very good be, reason yeah be devastating but yes I, I hopefully what i'm trying to do at the moment is make videos that i think that are a combination of what i want to do and what i think people really want to see yeah. so the the sweet spots have been like when I did a breakdown of the Prodigy synth sounds, for example. Mm -hmm. and I think this Gary Newman Polymoog um, video is another one. I hope. Um, so sure that's what be. I'm trying to do. Rather than, I think I've done lots and lots of videos about particular bits of gear that are uh, now. I've done you know 20 videos on vintage mono synths. So I probably won't be doing many more of those. I'm trying to do very specific things about. Mm. Can I suggest uh, DX7? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I've never done a, a like an actual dedicated video talking about how on earth it works. Because a lot of people skirt around that, don't they? Mm. They're just like, oh, this yeah. was the Taco Bell thing. Yeah. Or, and that's, you know, that's interesting and funny. And it's, it's spot the preset, isn't it, with that thing? But like Sadly, the sounds yeah. that you can, the way it works is fascinating. Yes. And if, I mean, you guys know Moot Booksley, Matt, mm -hmm. the stuff he does with FM synth. Oh, my 
goodness and it and there's another guy i've forgotten who does um his name i should have looked it up before i came on who i didn't know you're going to talk about Dio. actually no. of course i knew you were going to talk about <laughs> of <Dio>. course <laughs> uh, he uh he did a series of videos that were called like metal and wind and um you know wood or whatever and it was just a collection of beautiful images with just sounds made on was it, I don't know if it was on a DX or whether it was just FM for right. operator FM or something. Mm-hmm. My goodness, it's mind-boggling the sounds yeah. you can make with it, if you know. And, um, and yes, in fact, I'm actually interestingly, um, I'm working, or, well, giving a little bit of opinion to Jake at Wright Modular, who's doing something mm-hmm. very closely related to that for oh, the for the System 100M. We've been oh. um, wow. bullying him into making modules for that that never existed for the yeah for the roland system 100m so yes we've uh we've got fm in a nice in an analog synth which is yeah well amazing. awesome yeah. yeah um i mean uh i was at synth fest uh just you know last year and dr manny fernandez was there and we both hovered around um maximus you know analog solutions ah, yes and Manny was saying, oh, this is doing FM here. And, and he's finding FM in everything. And he yeah. can do all these amazing things. And I'm just like, how does he know this stuff? Um, it's it's quite remarkable. Um, he's a great guy, Manny. I managed yeah. to sit with him at dinner afterwards. So I was... Uh, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Great whilst he was over. Yes, because I'd, I'd, I'd heard your podcast with him yeah. two years earlier or something. And then, of course, he did a talk, didn't he? Uh, yeah. yeah we, with you. It's, it's, funny. it's funny. I was at uh, Synth East a couple of weeks ago in Norwich. And this guy comes up to me and he says, "Oh yes, I um I watched your um your presentation at, at Synthfest. I love the way you you what you did with that um that Modi X7 and the piano." And I'm like, "That was Manny." And he'd got me and Manny mixed up. I've I've got more hair and more around the waist than he has, but it, somehow he he got us mixed up, which was well, odd. I, I'd go with that. Yep, yeah, that was yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do that. And I've, <laughs> it, yeah, if I only had half of his brain, I'd be fantastic. He's actually going to be out at Superbooth as well, so we're going to yeah oh, we're, nice. we're staying in the same hotel, so we'll be backwards and forwards. So that I'm really looking forward to that. So uh, uh, maybe there'll be some interesting FM type things there. Um, Mad Fame is another person. You, um, yeah, uh, you've seen him on his video. He doesn't make them anymore, but they're all still up. And he does a lot of really good explanation about how DX7s particularly work. And there's a whole bunch of patches and stuff. So, but yeah, I'd I'd I'd, I'd buy that for a dollar if you made that video. Yeah, yeah, so, I should. Yeah. I might be able to borrow a, a. There's a DX5 I could borrow, which I thought was an interesting way to do it because it's not mm. the DX7. But I, I uh, the guy who owns it is trying to like so many people are. It's got to the point where it's like I've had these synths for decades. Mm-hmm it's time to sell them all. And he keeps just saying, I, I need to sell this, Alex. Do you want to do the video? I'm like, yeah, 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 I'll get to it. So I, yeah. I, um, I should take him up on that, but otherwise it's just going to go. But I think a DX5 would be a, a DX1 yeah, that, a one would be the ultimate, but. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah, yeah. one there, so, you know, <laughs> have a word. No, the DX5, honestly, it's, for me, it's the sweet spot because it's, it's you, you can sort of sling it under your arm, uh, but it has the sound of the DX1. It, it doesn't have the poly aftertouch which does kind of you know does make a difference but um anyway I, we're, we're derailing this conversation into my territory and i really shouldn't be doing that and right That's now fine. i can see what the chat is doing two days in the future <laughs> it's melting down um alex listen i'm gonna let you go because it's it's getting on here um and you've got your lovely family to go and tuck up into bed but um thank you ever so much for coming on do come on again soon and this time, you know, we'll have a bit more fun and a bit more time. But uh, I know you're a busy guy, but let us know. And we'd love to have you back on. Thank you um, very much. Thank you for having me and for accommodating no, me. Off, absolute pleasure. Yeah. Off M- schedule, Michelle's so. just behind me with a gun pointed. No, she's not really. <laughs> um, oh, there goes my camera again. Hey. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> hoped it wouldn't happen. There it goes. Um, the the video is out now. It's on your channel. And um, we'll be throwing the link up to the Bob Moak Foundation so that you can go and buy those Vox Humana samples uh, and play them in your contact or, you know, whichever device you want to do. Um, Alex Ball, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. It's been a pleasure has been mine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. And there we go. There he was and he's gone and we're getting a finger up from Andrew. We can't hear you. Maybe that's a good thing. Alex Ball. Ladies and gentlemen, there he was. 
Did we get those things right, Kent? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, look, what? car's all lovely and clean. Look. <gasps> Very good. Oh, look at that. And, you, and you've given it a respray as well. It's yeah. green. Yeah, it's mint green. Fantastic. Do you know what? I wish Alex had had a word with me before he did the video. Because I remembered something. What He was talking about that Voxumana patch. Um, I do that thing as well, where I put the Voxumana in the programmable one. Oh, you do it? Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's literally undo the two screws, take the board out, flick it away, put in the Voxumana board, screw it down, done. But then you have to lose one of the preset buttons. You, you have to use one Tell, of the... Honestly, vibe, bye-bye. Um, <laughs> harpsichord... <laughs> Harpsichord, it doesn't sound like a harpsichord, but it makes this sort of like eh, noise. It goes, eh, 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 eh. it's awful. Um, so that can go, bink, and put the box humana in, which is lovely. Mm. Yeah. But there's a, there's a hidden feature on the polymic. Um, which one? And, uh, either of them. Go on. See, when, when the poly, when the polymic was designed, it was designed to be a controller keyboard for the modular. For the constellation. Hence all, hence all those... Uh, yeah. that the interface on the back. Is it Lyra now, on top, Polymog, and then Taurus, wasn't it? Was yeah. Big thing. The beautiful thing about this was, if you plug a mini Moog into it, it would do top note priority. So you could hold a chord and then play the mini Moog oh. on on the Polymog's keyboard. Well, I'll be. So, but he don't mention that in the manuals or anything. Don't copyright strike, copyright strike. That, I just put that together from scratch using A and X, and it's not bad. I can tidy right. it up a bit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, about 60% of it's missing, but... Yeah, yeah, about 60%, you got the start of it. Yeah. 80% yeah. Well, of it's missing. you know what you can do? You can go to the Bob Moog Foundation website. <laughs> yes. Download the samples and just upload those into your montage. Now that's what I call a hook. You see? That's a very seamless seamless link. Absolutely faultless mode. Twelve quid or fourteen ninety nine US, I believe. The very the price good. adjusts automatically for you when you go to the website. Um and as Alex said, um he's meticulously sampled that patch, two two sets of velocities, and then um Mario has uh, scripted that into a contact bank but you get all the, the WAV samples as well, so you can drop them into whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, I'll one download that. per purchase, 12 quid, and, of course, 100% of that goes to the wonderful Bob Moog Foundation. We had Michelle in the chat just a little while ago, so if you're still there, Michelle, hi. Hope that was okay, um, and hopefully we'll mm -hmm. drive some more sales over to you to do that. And don't forget, you can also go to um, the... Alan R. Perlman Foundation website and get Alex's sample pack um, for, was it the Odyssey? I think he did, or he did one. But yeah, so go and support these wonderful organisations. Um, I'm just buying it now. There you go. And oh, you're more than welcome. The lovely Michelle Mokosa is in the house. Yay! Um, now, we're grateful for, for, for you for emailing me and saying, would you get Alex on the show? And so we did. There you go. We did it. Um, and hopefully that will that will help. Not that you know you need it, but mm. um, I, I absolutely love talking with Alex. He's just such a nice bloke, and he's so knowledgeable and so clever. And I hate him, but he's a lovely guy. <laughs> um, and so thank you to Alex, who is currently not at home. But when he gets home, I'm sure he'll uh, pop in. I was thinking while whilst that was running, maybe we take that interview and it, top and tail it quite nicely, and stick that as a freebie on the Patreon. There you go. Yeah. So you don't have to keep coming back to YouTube. You can just go and watch it there. We'll do something. Yeah, we'll do something like that. Um, because having Alex is a, is a real pleasure. And, um, yeah, we'll get him back on at some point soon. And maybe Git as well. Um, so, yeah, go and get that Fox Humana sample bank uh, from the Bob Moog Foundation. Uh, the links have been posted in the chat. And we've had them all over the place. And if you look, if you're watching on YouTube, down in the, in the description below, you'll find that there. But also, whilst we've got that on, um, might as well tell you that Alex, of course, has his own wonderful YouTube channel. There he is. I love that grin. Um, and there's that Gary Newman synthesizer. Um, the video is there. I'm not going to play it because there are going to be X 
bits of excerpts of yeah. songs that might get us a copyright strike. Um, but he's done a fantastic cover of Cars that is at the end of that video. But watch the whole thing because he goes through the history, the technology, and then, of course, he focuses on Newman's use of it, which is super interesting, especially for Newman fans like myself. It's a really good video. And I also uh, believe that the samples will eventually appear, if they're not already, um, on Alex's Patreon page. So if you're a Patreon subscriber, you could go and get them there. But go and buy them from Michelle anyway, because mm. uh, it's only a small amount of money. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Um, that's Alex Ball um, for you. I hope you all enjoyed that uh, as much as I did. And uh, there you go. Right, uh, well, we've got 15 minutes to spare. Um, let's see. We've got a few other news bits we could talk about. We've done the Tiger, which was really nice. We've done the Mask 1 and the KVR. How about a little bit of this? stop it there just in case that piece of music gets us another copyright claim because the last time we did uh an ik multimedia promo yeah the background music which they were just using the publishers of that music stuck in a claim and i said no and they said okay and they gave it back to us but i don't want to have to go through the bloody rigmarole again anyway so what this is is a new addition to their piano verse instrument. It's called the Hamburg Grand S274. And what it is, is a sample of a 1958 Steinway, a nine foot Hamburg D274 Steinway uh, that was sampled somewhere. Uh, where was it? Is it in Italy somewhere? Or I don't know. But they sampled it and they, they use uh, robotic methods so they make sure they get all the velocities. And of course, it's then put through. The wonderful piano verse plugin, which allows you to place that piano in a vast array of environments. So, from the obvious stuff like different rooms and studios <laughs> and buildings to the less obvious deserts and icebergs and forests, and it gives you this lovely atmosphere. Um, and so, this is the, I believe, the sixth piano to go into piano verse. And piano verse is something you can buy off the shelf or you can subscribe to it uh, so it's, you know they've given you both the options and what they've also done is they've introduced piano verse max um and piano verse max is a one-off uh, payment of 399 euros and 99 cents there it is and that gets you all of the six pianos that are currently available plus the actual application itself and two up and coming pianos as and when they're released so it's um it's not a bad price that 399 for everything or of course you can access piano verse through an all access monthly or yearly plan there are the prices 14.99 a month or 149.99 a year and that will get you some some extra savings so um yeah that's uh, the brand new thing from ik multimedia and i i don't know kent did you get a copy of this no i'm i'm not really a steinway fan okay i'm more i, I find them a bit very you know very woody mm. you know like caribou um <laughs> it's a, no nibbling the cocoa hoops no it's um, a tinny sound. Yeah. Tinny sound. It's a tinny they, sound. they do have other pianos they have yamaha yeah. steinways bosendorfers and fatiolis yeah no you see i i got my bosendorfers i got my quads i got my yammies and i'm Happy Bunny. Mm -hmm. That was I'm fair done. enough. No, honestly, as far as piano libraries are concerned now, I am so accommodated, <laughs> as it were. I do not need another piano on his skull. Fair enough. It sounds it sounds nice, but it but it's not my piano. We sound it's not my mm. sound. It's not my it's yeah, not my yeah. sang, if you know what I mean. But yeah. the price is pretty good. I must admit, because you know how you know some of these sample libraries are, oh, are geez, sort of like yeah. you go. It's how much. I wanted the plug-in, not the thing, yeah. your thing. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And it's like, for, for each piano, you get around 20 to 25 gig mm. of, of samples per piano. So these are not little things. You're going to need a big drive. 
and they've captured it in you know the, loads of different mic configurations and in really good studios and using you know robot robotic techniques to ensure a consistent level of sample across all the velocities and the ranges and every note gets sampled so they've put a lot of effort into this yeah. um and say so you have the option of buying it uh on its own as a standalone package or you can subscribe and do it monthly or, or yearly so there's, there's something for everyone is this for you andrew at all um sorry i was just downloading the voxy Mono stuff <laughs> um I'm, i've got quite a few pianos um there are others that where I do you put them all <laughs> I prefer, well, I've got I've got sample libraries in Back samplers the as, as well indeed. as you know, some up here. I, it's it's a good thing. I'm not sure I'm going to pay for 399 for it. I'm just not. Um, it it is it is interesting, but I'm not sure it's interesting enough to make me want to go and buy it. There are there are other pianos that I prefer. I love the Abbey Road piano. Mm -hmm. Not the Abbey Road. The um, uh, is it Abbey Road or Maida Vale? Oh, the BBC Symphony. The, the BBC Symphony yes. piano is a lovely, lovely thing. And I've got a Bosendorfer that we sampled years ago that's just beautiful and to die for. I'm, I'm not sure is the answer. I, I, as much as I love pianos, there was nothing about that particular, pi that particular piano I liked. And I remember when we reviewed this originally, I thought it was kind of an interesting thing, but essentially it's just placing the piano in different... Um, environment. That's its unique selling point. Yeah, they're they're really well sampled pianos, but what makes them different from others is they they use a lot of effects processing. So, you, yeah, I've got a lot of effects processing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know. So, so I'm, I'm being a bit curmudgeonly. I'm sure they've done a great job. For some people, I'm sure this would be excellent. It just mm. seems like I, you know, I can't quite see the point. There's lots of different pianos. Good, yeah, great. Yeah, no, furry not, muff, not, as not, they not say. Me. That's, that's that's absolutely fine. Um, but if you are interested in it, then it's uh, ikmultimedia.com mm. and you can find everything there. And uh, links have been posted in the chat. Um, the chat. So what else have we got here? Oh, well, I suppose th this we should absolutely mention. So a few weeks ago, you remember that we shared the list of um, equipment that was being sold from um, Dominic Hawkins' estate and um, Margaret uh, had allowed herself to uh, be hassled by all of us synth nerds that wanted such things. Well, now, um, at the time, people were saying, because the, the list was the list was the list, and there was the list, and you just sent Margaret an email and said, is this available? <coughs> if it was, she would say so. If it wasn't, she would say so, and then you would then proceed accordingly. Well, now um, this is available online, and it's a live list it's on google docs and um i will put the link in the chat right now because i'm just conscious that i didn't do that and the guys who are moderating probably won't have it so there you go the link is in the chat um so the list is there it's now uh, showing all the things that have been grayed out have sold as you can appreciate and um everything that hasn't sold is still uh, in black uh, print just there so if you are looking to buy any of these things, uh, mail Margaret and tell her what you want, if it's still available on there, and fingers crossed, you can get in there and grab yourself um, a lovely piece uh, to remember Dominic by, and of course, maybe something you will use in your music making um, ventures, whatever they might be. And I'm still, so I'm just waiting for my, hoping to get a bonus at the end of this month from work. And um, yeah, there's one or two things I've got my eye on, so fingers crossed they'll be around. I'm um, that Brightcaster M7. Yes, yeah, there's lots of lots of uh, Brightcasty M7. Yeah, that's that's yeah. still there. Um, so that the, the Hydrosynth Deluxe is still there. Surprising, I was um, I was surprised that because that's one thing I'm thinking. Well, it depends on how much my bonus is, um, but we'll see. Um, and there's some lovely Korg stuff, some Moog stuff, loads of Roland gear in there. Uh, mm. Some of it with Kiwi wet, wet. I can never do that. Kiwi Wetwo fits, <laughs> Jonathan Wass. Um, so yeah, those um, and lots of other goodies. So um, yeah, the the link is in the chat and um, go and, and have a have a look. And if there's anything you want there, then give Margaret an email. Be very polite to her. Um, 
and uh, hopefully you'll be able to grab something uh, of of worthy note. Um, so that is that, and I guess well, we'll we'll just do one more bit here, and I don't think we're going to spend too much time on it because I, th I believe I'm the only person uh, of us three that use Ableton Live, but Ableton Live Twelve is out now it's been in beta now for a, a little while um what happened just there it just disappeared off the screen um it's um just throw me right off there it's been uh, available for a little while as a beta version if you are uh, registered in the beta program um but it's now available to to everyone and uh if you got in quick you hopefully were able to get a discount on your upgrade um if not, you can get it now at full price. I actually really like what they've done with it. It's subtle, but it's nice, and it's kind of made my experience a little, you know, easier with it. Is it like is it like Cubase thirteen in that it's user interface stuff that's really made a difference? No, it's it's the, the, they they have tweaked the user interface, but only very subtly, because Ableton Live does what it does and that's what it's famous for and if if they were to change that drastically i think lots and lots of people would be rather upset um but they've added some new synthesizers so you've got raw um there's a granular synthesis in there there's some new performance packs and drum packs and stuff that, that go with uh with it as well it's they've just tidy things up a little bit made things a little bit more intuitive uh than before and i'm sure under the hood there's lots of uh, good things but I loaded it up um, when it came out on the 5th I think it was and was pleasantly surprised with the way it looked on screen it just looked a little bit more organized um, so yeah it's it's there now but, are you um, finding it easier to get around a little bit yes for somebody who's pretty basically yeah you know, I'm, I'm far from even uh, intermediate on this um, I'm, I'm very raw around the edges. Raw, raw, see raw. Yeah, raw. Very, I see what I did there. So, <laughs> anyway, so Ableton Live 12 is out, and what we are also out of is time and news topics, marbles, and those as well. Um, so there we go. Um, that's a show. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, the Alex Ball interview, which we'll we'll try and see if we can make that available as a standalone thing for our Patreon subscribers. And if you haven't already and you want to, then you can subscribe to our Patreon page uh, right here. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash ProSynth Network. Go on um, when you want to. Go yeah. On. And actually, it, this has just reminded me, uh, the wonderful Nick House in the chat said... Do YouTube supporters get these fab goodies too? And yes, I am going to try and do that this weekend. So if you are a YouTube member, then I think there's a way of getting you exclusive things. So we'll we'll try and figure out how to do that. And uh, yeah, if you're a YouTube member, then hopefully you'll get some of those things as well. Um, so yeah, um, what else was there to, to remind everybody of? Well, of course... Um, the Bob Moog Foundation link. The, the clickable link is in the chat. It's also down below in the description of this video. And don't it. forget also, Alex Ball has a Patreon page. Um, so go and subscribe to him. You get loads of goodies there. And of course, his um, YouTube channel, which I'm sure every single one of us has subscribed to. And if you haven't, what the hell is wrong with you? Yeah. It's brilliant. It's a fantastic channel. He's a very go. cool dude. He's... I, He's just lovely. Yeah. He's a really nice guy, and he knows his shit. And he's one of these guys that when you meet him in person, he's even nicer than you think he is. I hate him. I know. <laughs> and he, he's got a good hug as well. He's got a good old hug. So looking forward to seeing Alex at various places this year. Does um, he want to Range Rover? Easy. Uh, so that, ladies and germs, is a show. Um, gentlemen, anything lined up particularly for... This coming week? A weekend? Or the weekend? Well, if there's nothing else on, I might be, I might do a pub tomorrow night. Um, okay. And we've got rounds tomorrow morning. Yes. Well, our morning, anyway. Well, 1pm. 1, 1 yeah, I don't know if we've got, I don't know if we've got a Jamie. Someday. We have. 
Oh, we have. Oh, yep. okay, cool. He's he's got uh, Tim and a couple of others. Susie, I think it is, and yeah. I can't remember the name of the other person. Is it Marshall? It might be Marshall. Okay. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, he's got uh, three guests coming on, and he is definitely doing a show this week. Oh, good. So, That's yeah. Sunday's taken care of as well. Cool. Yeah. So Saturday ran, Sunday Jamie, um, yeah, and a pub on Saturday night with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What could, more uh, could the synthesizer come Tomorrow do? I'm bringing the uh, the three... 3D printers, the two CNCs out of the shed and Ooh. moving them down to the workshop. The Carvera has been posted. Ooh. Mm. Interesting times. Yep. You do my teeth. Yep. No That's problem, an Android. Just, I, yeah, just hold your head still, you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eat soup. Uh, yeah. Indeed. How about you, Mr. Longhurst? Anything uh, funky for the weekend or for next week? I was planning this weekend to get on with this, the, the init patches for the CS80 sort of thing, to try and get it closer to a starting point. That's what I was planning to do. But I've suddenly realised I've <laughs> I've got a something I was supposed to have done this week that just with everything that went on, I forgot. So I think I'm going to spend a, at least one of the days just doing documentation on something, which is just, you know, it's a weekend. But I've got to get mm. it out for Monday, so. Yeah. But don't, there we Indeed. go. Indeed. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. I, I have got a bunch of articles to write for Gear News that go out, you know, the following week. So I try and get those done on a Saturday before before Rans comes on and then try to get Rans out, you know, done and dusted before the football comes on and then... Hopefully I'll have Sunday to myself. Um, but no, it's Mothering Sunday, isn't it? So I'm taking my mother and my mother-in-law out for afternoon tea. As you do. Mm. I was going to take my mother out this Sunday, but for some reason, some bloody reason, the local authorities really object to you digging in the grave. I don't know. It's I thought he's, like, he's not going to go. He's not, he's, he's I don't there. know why. I mean, you know. <laughs> dear, dear. Funny buggers they are. Dear, oh dear. Really, really. <sighs> yeah, it's what? just a day out. Come on. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, I believe um, Synchrotron has uh, something going on at ten o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh. On on and- you on the YouTube's, I believe that's kind of what I've I've been trying to s- scroll through. So, if you want to give us a link, Synchrotron. Or tell us where we can find you. Um, yeah, what, we'll what happily... are you doing, man? What, what's going on? What's going down? What's going on, on, man? Yeah. Spill the beans, man. What's going on, man? Like that. Actually, I'll tell you what. Let, let's do this live on air. I, yes. I'm guessing Synchrotron uh-huh. YouTube. Uh, Synchrotron oh, Synth Show. Are you under a different name? Or do I have to? Oh, no, there you go. A creator of stuff. There he is. Creator of stuff. Yeah, we like stuff. Oh, we like stuff. We can 3D print stuff. How about is it? Is it that link? There you go. Oh, that's that's Synchrotron's channel. So if you've got something going on tomorrow at 10 a.m. UK 10 a. UK time, yeah. Well, I'll watch yeah, no, it on catch up. Me up at nine. Where's that music coming from? Oh, it's coming from there. I could hear this music in the background. Thought, it's not the me. No. It's the <laughs> it's Synchrotron's YouTube channel. I thought that sounds ominous. Yeah, Copyright strike. Omnis. No, you weren't hearing that, were you? No. No, that's fine. Yeah, so we, no, we're going to get a copyright strike for no, no, no. No, we don't. No, there you go. Three D print do the PSN logo. Sell it as merch. Oh, there you oh. go. Yeah. Could well, do it make in aluminium the, now with the Carvera. Yeah. Oh, 3D make print the cookie cutters and all sorts of things. Rubber stamps and Yeah. Penguin yeah. Of death. There you go. If you have a YouTube show that you want to promote or want us to give you a shout out, tell us. We will happily let people know. So do tell yeah. us. You know? So, you know, we, we know about the likes of Ranzi and Jamie and Kent and us and Sonic State. You know, we give all those people a plug. But if yeah. we don't know about it, we can't tell anyone. But tell us, and we will. It's as simple as that. Yeah. 
Um, so there we go. That's another week done and dusted. I'm off to uh, put my feet up, have a Ooh. glass of vino, watch a film or something. Film. Yeah, and uh, nurse my. I don't know if anybody's. I haven't got herpes or anything, but when I had my when I had my toothy peg sorted, mm. either I bit myself when my <laughs> lip was numb and didn't notice it, and I'm noticing it now, or it's where. They've got this suction thing, and they hook it over your lower jaw, and just it hangs there, and it pushes down on your, you know, the bit under your tongue, whatever that's called. Uh, and you're like this, and I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's that. She was really going for it, really going for it. And that's what you're telling your wife, is it? Yeah, yeah. I've got a, yeah. My dentist. There, Your Honour. Rest yeah. the case for the defence. Yeah. Mm. Anyway. Moving on, let's say goodbye to everyone. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you're a first-time watcher, I hope we didn't put you off too much. Make Hi, sure you Henry. hit that subscribe button. And um, and thanks for watching. And do come back in the same time, same place next week where we'll have more of this rubbish um, that you seem to enjoy and keep coming back for. So thank you ever so much for all of that. And um, you yeah. talking to me? What? You're talking to me? Talk to everyone. Not just oh. you. No, oh, okay. You make you special. I thought you were talking to just him. I thought, mm -hmm. I thought you were thanking me for turning up every week. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I do. do in you? a roundabout okay. way. Yeah, in a roundabout yeah. way. Yeah. Roundabout send, way yeah. send chocolate. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, come come back next week if you want. Oh, not oh. Oh, more leather and baby oil sessions again, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right, so. Oh, well, got to take the rough with the smooth. Indeed. Anyway, <laughs> let's put this one to bed. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Have a fantastic Easy weekend. Day. Stay safe. Be careful. Make lots of great music. Ta-ta. Au revoir.